Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer, what is known as the daily office lectionary. And as I've mentioned, we have two readings assigned for morning prayer, two readings assigned for evening prayer, uh, and one of them for, at each of them is always from the Old Testament. Uh, and what we haven't really done is look at the Old Testament lesson that we're working our way through, uh, so I thought we would do that today. Uh, we are working our way through the book of the prophet Ezekiel. There are three major prophets that take place kind of the same section of scripture. You've got Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, uh, and they do overlap in time period. Remember, the Bible's not written, uh, compiled sequentially. Uh, and so these folks do overlap. Uh, but Ezekiel is dealing with a people of Israel who have been uh, placed in exile. They have been uh, taken out of the land. They've been defeated. Uh, and many of them are turning to false idols. Yesterday's lesson, in the 13th chapter, we heard him talk about false prophets. And there were lots of prophets who, prophets who were prophesying in God's name. And they were just making it up in the, uh, and saying basically what they thought people wanted to hear. And um, that, of course, is the hazard that we all have, isn't it? We all want to just uh, expect that God would put his uh, stamp of approval on anything that we want, and, and we will surround ourselves with people, uh, or sycophants, who will tell us exactly what we want to hear. That's, oftentimes, that's not exactly how God works, is it? Uh, in fact, we need to hear the hard truth, and that prophets are called to give the hard truth hard truth. And unfortunately, because of that, most of the prophets don't end up sleeping, uh, falling asleep and dying. Most of them end up being put to death for saying the hard things. Um, so now we're jumping up into the 14th ch chapter of Ezekiel. And part of what Ezekiel is dealing with here is the fact that people have set up idols in their hearts, not not even not just religious idols in which they're worshiping false gods, and that's starting to happen for the people of Israel uh, as they have been removed from Jerusalem and from the worship in the temple. Uh, they are falling for the false religions that are surrounding them. Uh, but he says primarily it's the false idols in their hearts, the fact that they've taken these things to heart and they've set up other things as, as gods. So let's hear what it has to say. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I inquire of all of them by them? Therefore speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols, that I may make the house of Israel in thy own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. Therefore say unto the house of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God, Repent and turn yourselves from your idols, and turn away your faces from all your abominations. And then he, he goes on to speak in that particular vein about it. Now, now we're saying, well, Father, that that's doesn't apply to me because after all, I don't have a statue of Baal that I'm, I'm making sacrifices to and I don't have a statue of, of some other false god uh, that I am worshiping and giving obeisance to. Uh, and thanks be to God for that. Uh, but the reality is, is that we do set up all sorts of idols in our hearts and there are lots of folks around us that are, in fact, um, setting up a worshiping false gods. Uh, we see people falling for astrology. We, fall, we see people falling for Wiccan and earth worship. Uh, and those are the pagan things uh, mostly reinvented and made up recently, but they claim to be ancient. Uh, but the, the error itself is ancient and that people try to worship the created rather than the creator. Uh, but, but more importantly, what we're talking about in today's lesson with Ezekiel, the prophet, are the idols that we set up in our heart. What are the things that we put before God in our heart? Um, money is one that certainly people, you know, do a lot of worship of money, right? That becomes their, their ultimate good is to make more money, to be more important, to be more powerful. These all become idols in our heart. Uh, and, and when we set up these things as our ultimate purpose and our ultimate good, uh, or even worse, our identity is based on our sinfulness, uh, all of these things become idols because they replace the place in our heart that the worship of Almighty God 
is supposed to be. And for some, that's an addiction. Uh, we, that hole that's meant for the love of God and the worship of God, we try to fill with drugs and with alcohol. Uh, and so there are all sorts of things that we may set up that may not look like some sort of uh, idol as in a golden calf like the people of Israel did uh, and began to worship and dance around. Uh, but it, so it may not look like that, but it's the things that we take to our heart, right? Show me what you, is in your heart. Show me what it is that you place value on. And, and I, I tell you, well, you've made an idol of it, right? That, that's, that's the thing we have to be very careful of. And that's the thing that Ezekiel the prophet is warning us against. Uh, he is bringing the word of God to us and telling us to repent of these things, repent of our sin, repent of our idolatry, and return to the Lord. That is the universal message of the prophets. So there it is, Ezekiel the prophet. We'll jump back into our gospel and our, our uh, book of Proverbs as well as we go through the rest of this week. But I do hope that you have a wonderful weekend. I'm sorry, a wonderful Wednesday, that you will keep our country in your prayers uh, during this time of transition and that you may have a blessed Wednesday. May God bless you.